Okay, another really cool script to just come to Cyril. This one allows us to take our one-shot color camera data that we've taken with a dual narrowband filter. For example, an L-Extreme or an L-Enhance or uh, the IDES MBZ2, any of those narrowband type filters designed for our OSC camera and turn it into a Hubble palette. We have six different Hubble palette types to choose from. So this is a pretty cool one. Let's check it out. My name is Rich and you're watching Deep Space Astro. Okay, first we need to install the script. So as usual, come up to your burger menu, click on get scripts. And down here in the list of scripts, you wanna look for Hubble palette from dual narrowband OSC and just make sure you put a tick mark next to it and then click apply. Come up to your scripts menu and then Python scripts under utility, you should now see the new script ready to go. Important thing to note is this script is intended to be used on not only a one-shot color image, but a starless image. So make sure you've already removed your stars and done any of your normal pre-processing, like cropping, background extraction. And there's actually a list of instructions in the script I'll show you here. So I've already removed the stars. If we come into an auto stretch view, you can see what we're working with. In addition to removing the stars, like I said, I've already done a crop, I've done background extraction, sharpening, denoising, part of my normal workflow. So whatever your normal workflow is, that gets you to the point when you remove your stars, that's when you're gonna stop and that's where you run this script and choose which Hubble palette you wanna use. So we'll come up into scripts now, Python scripts, utility, and the Hubble palette script. And like I said, he, the developer has given some quick instructions over in the left hand side here covering just what I said make sure you've done your stacking cropping gradient removal you know any of this normal stuff I know some people like to denoise afterwards after they stretched and that's fine uh, the important thing here as he states is that the image must be star free so the stars need to be removed so let's just talk about the interface here a little bit this is all pixel math driven and we have four presets to choose from the defaults classic it shows you the formulas that you can use that are being used for the classic. If I was to change it to improved, you'll notice that these formulas change depending on which preset that you're using. And we'll go through some of these here in a minute. So once you have your preset selected, then you want to select the Hubble palette type that you want to use. And if you hover over it, it gives you an explanation if you're not aware. So the H is your hydrogen alpha, S is your sulfur two, and O is your oxygen three. And as you can see in this help tag here, it's showing you that HA is going to the red channel, sulfur is going to the green channel, and oxygen is going to the blue channel. So as you view these things, if you're not already aware, the order that they're in represents RGB. So hydrogen in red, sulfur in green, oxygen in blue. Same thing here with the SHL example. Sulfur will be the red channel, hydrogen will be the green channel and oxygen would be the blue channel. And again, if, if you hover over each of these, it shows you just what I stated. So at this point, starting with the classic presets and the default HSO, just click apply. And it's going to break the channels out individually in the RGMB and then recombine them in your HSO palette. If you want to look at the SHO, select SHO, click apply. And the same thing happens. It'll go through and it'll combine them in the SHO. And we can just go through each of these. So this is OSH. This is OHS. This is HOS. And then last is HOO. So once you decide what you want, one you want to use, you can you can just go ahead and run with it at that point. So, but let's look at some of these presets as well. So I'm going to go back up into HSO and click apply again just to get that view back up on the screen. And if we change the preset from classic to improved, like I said, it changes the formulas, and then click apply. Because it's a different formula, you're going to get a different look. Now, as you can see, this is not what we were going for. The reason for all the magenta is because down here in the bottom in my auto stretch view, I'm currently in a linked mode. So if I just click on that button to unlink the stretch, there's more of what we we're looking for. So now, just so we can see the difference, if I go back to classic and hit apply and specifically, you know, watch where these yellows are at. So if I jump back over into improved and then click apply, you can see the color is a little bit more saturated. It pops a little bit differently than it did with the with the classic presets same thing we can go down and look at the advanced hit apply again 
and see how those formulas apply to the image. And then the fourth one is the nonlinear S2. Click apply again. That one is not what we're looking for, right? But it'll have a different effect on different data. For this one, I'm going to leave it on improved and click apply and we'll run with this. Now, a couple more things I want to show you about the script before we actually jump into a quick processing and get the stars put back in is first of all, over here on the right hand side, you have a reset button. So if you click that, that'll take you back to your original image. I'm unlinked, so it doesn't look like it did initially. So if I hit my link button down here, that's how we, that's what we started with. And then also you can save a custom formula. So if you have a formula that you want to use and store, or maybe you want to change these existing formulas to better suit your needs. For example, if I wanted to change that 0 0.3 to 0 0.5, I can say save custom formula. And now when I say load custom formula, you can see it says custom loaded and it brought up my custom formula for me. So a nice little way to store a formula that works better for you. So again, we're gonna go back to improved. I'm gonna click apply. I'm going to unlink my auto stretch and then we'll close the script. Now, before we move forward with this, I just want to show you my working directory. So each time that I generated one of those Hubble palettes, it created another file for me. So it shows you that I, this one was SHO with a classic preset. This one was HSO with the advanced preset, so on and so forth. So these do not get removed automatically. They will always be here. So once you're done processing, you'll probably want to go back and clean these up. So I just want to make you aware of that. So this is what we're going to go with because we used the improved preset. If I link these again, we have a magenta view. So we need to fix that before we start stretching. So what I'm going to do is just a manual color calibration on this. I'm going to come up to image processing, color calibration, and just select color calibration. You don't want to use photometric color calibration or spectral photometric color calibration. Neither one of those two will get you what you want. Now being in this magenta view, we want to select an area of the background for a background neutralization. It's hard to do when it's all magenta. So again, if you just unlink your auto stretch, you'll be able to see more of what you're working with. So I'm gonna come over here and just draw a selection and what I want to be the representation of my background. Click on use current selection and then background neutralization. At this point, now that's complete, I can relink my auto stretch and that magenta has gone away, but this still is not the view that we saw when we initially ran it through the script. So we're going to calibrate our white reference now. So I usually like to make a selection around a nice contrasty area of the image. So I got some darks and some brights and everything. Click on use current selection and then apply. Now we've got more of the look that we saw when it came out of the script in our unlinked auto stretch view. So when we stretch it, this is what we're going to be working with now. So I'm going to click close and I'm going to save real quick just so we don't lose what we did. And then we're going to jump down into linear to do our stretching. So I use generalized hyperbolic stretch when I stretch. So image processing stretches and GHS. And I'm just going to do this real quick. This isn't a processing video. I just wanted to take you through adding the stars back in. So whatever your process is for stretching your image, you know, follow that workflow. You, you may need to make some changes, obviously, because of the Hubble palette, but it's all going to depend on your data and, and your preferences. So let's just real quick give this thing a stretch and get this data pulled out and move the black point back over. I said, I'm just going to kind of do this quick and dirty just to get through it. Keep an eye on your histogram. If it starts drifting off from the side, I like to pull back my, my black point watching that I don't clip down here. 002 is not horrible. It's not going to do any damage to the data. So I'll leave that there and just start bumping this up a little bit. Little increments, right? And then we'll grab our kind of a fainter area over here. Set that as my symmetry points. Give that a little bit of a stretch just to brighten things up. Do it one more time. And then I'm going to put my symmetry point kind of far over here to the right. Stretch it out just to kind of bring the contrast in. Do it one or two more times, just depending. I think that looks good. Give it a couple more just standard stretches without moving that symmetry point just to kind of brighten things up a bit. You get the idea, right? And, and the reason that I wanted to go through this, and let me save this real quick, is because when we add the stars back, I don't want you to get confused. Usually we just look for the starless result file because that's what it named it when we removed the stars. But since we ran it through the script, like I showed you before, each of our starless images have their own individual names now. So if you've gone through to make a decision on which one you wanted to use, 
like I did, and you have all these, you have multiple files to choose from that are named starless. So you want to make sure that when you do your recomposition with the stars, that you know what the name of your file is. And you can see it up here in the top right. So HSO improved is what we're going to be looking for. Real quick though, before we do that, I'm just going to see what bumping up the saturation does for me just a little bit. I'll go turn the preview off and on. I don't want to go too crazy. And then I don't know, with an image like this, sometimes I like to use the contrast limited adaptive histogram equalization. It does a good job of adding additional contrast into the image. I'm going to run with that. Click save. Take note of my image name, which is HSO improved. And we'll go up to image processing, star processing, and then star recomposition. If you forgot the name of your file, it's not a big deal. When you go to select it, if you just sort by date modified, it'll come right up on the top, right? That's the last file that I saved. So I know that's my image. So we'll just double click on that. And just like usual, bring the original star mask in and just stretch your stars back wherever you like them, right? It's all preference at this point. Click apply. And there we are. That's our final HOO image. Obviously you want to save it because it has not been saved yet. So we can just call this HOO and final for NGC 7000. And that's it. So play around with it. See how you guys like it. I think this is pretty cool, especially if you're not into mono imaging and you're just using a one shot color camera. This is a perfect way to be able to do that as long as you're shooting behind a narrow band type filter. I want to take this opportunity to say thanks to all my members here on YouTube and on Buy Me A Coffee. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thanks to all of you that watch and like and subscribe. Leave a comment if you have any questions. We'll see you on the next one in clear skies.